This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is the ramble. See, it says Alex, it says the ramble, and then it must be real. We're here until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, that smiling, beaming face is a guy I love to talk to once a week because we just have a nice time talking. This is uh, Stephen Kravitz. Hello, Stephen. How are you, my friend? Good, Alex. How are you? Yeah, how's everything uh, there in uh, Worcester, Massachusetts? Well, right now, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful here, too. It's uh, very nice. We, we do this during the day, folks, in spite of the fact. Right. Yeah. I probably should, nah, because we run this at night, so they can. <laughs> right. That's why I never know what to say. Good day, good morning, good evening. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Uh, but uh, uh, it's really nice up there, Wooster. Also, uh, how are you doing? Uh, are you uh, out of the COVID now? Are you? Oh yeah. Up to a hundred percent everywhere and yes. all that stuff. Yeah. No, it's weird not to wear a mask. What? You don't have to wear a mask now? No. We don't either. We're we're a hundred percent on most places. I think if we get on a subway, we have to wear a mask. Right. And, uh, on a know. bus, on the subway. Yeah. You know, yeah, you still have to wear a mask. Yeah. And the most stores don't require it anymore. The what? Most stores do not require a mask. Right. Right. Well, I they they did away with the mask thing yesterday. And uh, the 100% and so on. But I went to a pharmacy and you had to wear it. Right. You know? Right. And uh uh I went to several other places where uh, I found that I had to wear it. So Well, I still wear it when I go into a store. Yeah, when you when you go into a store, right, and then and yeah. then it depends on how comfortable I am. I'll either take the mask off or I'll leave it on. Oh, okay, all right. You know, I uh, I carry one. I have, in fact, I have one in my pocket right now. Just one of these little things. You know, just right. nothing nothing complicated. Not the uh, surgical mask or whatever right. anymore. Right, 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 uh, right. I, I would not have worn this one in the old days because I didn't consider it. I don't know it didn't seem to work well right uh, but right. The, you know the good old-fashioned uh, uh, masks surgical. That, the, the surgical masks uh, were what I liked wearing you know right and right, we, right, and, right. We, and, and we still have hundreds of them in the house hey really we're wait we're ready for the next pandemic <laughs> well let's hope not yeah yeah uh, so uh, has has anything changed in your life uh, Oh, let's say career-wise, because of the uh, uptick in uh, in uh, in freedom, as it were. Uh, no, not not just yet. Although I did have a critter in the house. I had a mouse, which I caught, and oh. then I had to wear gloves to flush down the toilet. The gray white hunter. If we flush him down the toilet, do they still live? Oh, he was dead. Oh, he was. You had already killed him. Well, I didn't. The trap did. Snap. Oh, oh, okay. One of those. We get the glue traps. What's that now? The, the glue traps are the ones that when they wind up in them, the glue trap hops around. You know. Oh, God. No, because they're stuck in there. They're dying. They're dying of starvation. Right. Marjorie right. goes, well, it's more humane. What, more humane than just hitting them over the head and killing them? Right. Mine was done in a second. It was snap right on the neck. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we had a dead mouse, uh, so I th I just threw it out the window. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nothing to do with it. So I know you haven't done anything about your tooth yet. Well, I've been calling around, and most dentists aren't taking new patients. They aren't taking new, pa new patients? Right. You or mean, new patients. You mean there aren't any new... Uh, they must be doing really well if they're not taking any new patients. Yes. Because what I find about dentists that bothers me most about dentists is the, the dreaded uh, tooth cleaning. 
Oh, yeah. Because, that hurts like hell. No, but if, forget about that part of it. I can take the teeth cleaning. I know that it's important. But they, we have to do this four times a year. Well, the insurance only says twice. Right. Okay. And then what they do is they uh, uh, they then, it's like they're exploring like in a gold mine. Okay. I always felt as a kid, they would fill your teeth and then drill holes in other ones to create new, <laughs> new cavities. I always felt they did that. Yeah. Well, I, in this particular case, I think that they, the reason they do the cleaning is they can take the x-rays and they take the x-rays so they can find out something. And there's always something wrong. Right. They always right. find something. Especially at our age. Especially at our age, but in general. They always find oh, something. Sure. You know, they're looking for business when they do that. Mm, let me see well, here. Let me look in your. They, they, they would drill those extra yeah. holes. Let me look in your mouth there. Oh, I see a yacht. <laughs> <laughs> I see a new condo. So you you call the dentist and they they don't uh, have any appointments available. Right, right. I never knew a dentist that didn't have room for one more person. No, usually. You know, it, it usually happens with um, doctors. Doctors don't accept new patients a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, I was lucky to get a doctor. So, but what? what I mean, but, but with dentists? I mean, come on, they're always right. looking for new business. Right. Maybe right. you didn't have the right insurance or something. Or Maybe did... I don't have any dental. Oh, insurance. oh, yes, you don't have any dental insurance. Right, right. I, I forgot. You're the normal right. American. Boy, uh -huh. you, know, you know what really pissed me off? I mean, I know folks that we have a tendency to talk on this program a lot about medical stuff and insurance plans and right. crap like that, but we're at that age. You know, this is the most important thing to us at this point is how insured we are. Right, right, right. right. Uh, and, and it's because at our age, too, something's going to go wrong. You know, you, you didn't just because you did all that running and the jumping and the you know <laughs> the flip flopping and all the things you're supposed to do to be healthy, and because you ate a healthy diet and you didn't eat too many fats and you didn't do this and you didn't do that, the fact is you're still going to get fucked up when you're 80. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. It, it, something's going to happen. I don't know anybody my age who doesn't have something wrong with them, no matter how healthy a life they lived. So, well, I know very few people who have no problems. In fact, I don't know anybody who doesn't have some sort of medical issues at my age. At your age, and you're what, 60? 60, 65. 65. Uh, and I, you know, my, you, you take my wife, she's got like a whole bunch of things. I mean, nothing's going to kill her, right. mind you. But just uh, she's got a little this and a little that, and she's got right. that thing, and she, she's had that all her life, and, you know. So, I mean, really you need the insurance. Well, now here's the thing. So it comes to pharmaceutical insurance, all right? Right. So they got this Part D. Now we were thrown in because AFTRA threw us out, okay? SAG right, AFTRA you told me that. threw us out. We, were, we had to go out and just buy normal insurances in addition to the Part D Medicare or whatever. My Part D Medicare takes care of my prescriptions. Yeah, that's fine. And that's wonderful. And that's terrific. Until you get to the donut hole. Right, right. Well, well yesterday I go to pick up my wife's stuff and she gets this stuff called Restasis, which is an eye drop or something. And right. it, it's really good at preventing dry eyes and so on. And she needs it, okay? Uh, 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 yes, we have everything here. By the way, we should let you know the restasis is going to cost $400. Oh, my God. And we said, why? And they said, well, you better call uh, Medicare and ask them. And so she called Medicare today, and they said, oh, well, you hit the donut hole. It's only, what, the beginning of June or the middle right. of June, and she's already hit the donut hole? Now, yeah. what does that mean? You've used up all your prescriptions? No, it's when you reach, I don't know, something like $3,000 or something, three thousand, thirty-five hundred dollars and right. then it goes into a donut hole. You, I don't think you pay the whole amount. I don't know what happened once you hit the donut hole, but the fact is there's a period of about $2,500 there where not much happens. You're spending money like crazy. 
Right. Now, right. what I what I think is wrong about this is that this is Medicare Part D. Medicare takes care of people over the age of 65. When right. you've reached over the age of 65, chances are you don't have any income coming in. That's right. Right? Why create a donut hole for old people? What? It's ridiculous. Right, 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 right. And, you know, somebody's really got a lot of health conditions. Like, I'll never hit the donut hole. I just don't have enough, okay? In fact, right. I, don't, I don't even use a prescription. I have prescription plan, but I don't use it because there's a $450 uh, deductible. Really? That I got to take care of before they start giving me the cheaper price. So I can, from the beginning, go to Costco, get my stuff almost as cheap, and save the money on that deductible. But anyway, that be that as it may. It, these are old people, okay, and and they, they're they're on a fixed income, and all of a sudden you're throwing a donut hole at them. Right, right, right. Are That's you close. out of your mind? Do you not That's care close. about human beings in this country who have contributed to its well-being? No, yeah. they don't, and you know that they don't care about old people. They have no respect for old people in this country. Old, old, and in the way. You've been to foreign countries, okay? Yes. Uh, in England, they take very good care of their old people. Right. You know, they don't put them out to pasture. You know, right. they take care of them. As a matter of fact, I think there's a thing where you actually get a, a week's, two weeks vacation in another country. Really? Yeah, if you're old, you can cash that in and go somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, they, they respect old people. In this country, we don't. No, no. way. No way. You know, and and I, you know, I guess I'm griping about it because I'm an old person. But I was griping about this when I was in my 30s. How they tr right. how we treated old people in this country. Right. You sure. Know? And it, and it always kind of bothered me. Um, we should treat them a hell of a lot better than we do, and we don't. Well, that's like in in in, in France. You see a lot of uh, young people walking with their grandparents, which you don't see here. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're, yeah. they're, they're respecting their elders. Uh, when I was in, uh, when I was at the Olympics in, uh, uh, where was it? In Switzerland. Uh, I'm trying to remember uh, the town now uh, because my mind is going. Um, and it's I, gone. It's not going. Well, I used it's to gone. know the town. It was. Uh, it was. Uh, it was. Well, anyway. Uh, so I was there, and we were doing the show from uh, the Olympics. And I got sick. I got uh, strep throat. Right. So I went to their dispensary or whatever, and they said, well, we can't do anything about you here because you're an American, and we you, this is for Swiss, okay? Because it was free. You know, it was the Swiss plan. They said, you have to go to a, a private doctor. And so they gave me a name of a private doctor, and I went to him. And... The, it, it was interesting because this is a country with socialized medicine. Right. Where everybody in the country gets as much medicine as they need for free. If you're a citizen. Right. If you're not a citizen, you got to go to the regular doctor. Right. And the regular doctor, it was like, it was the most pathetic office I've ever seen in my life. You know, magazines from 1945, you know, <laughs> wallpaper peeling off the walls. And, right. and you know these doctors, they did business off of people that weren't didn't come under the uh, auspices of, of of the healthcare system. In right. you know, so I I learned what it was like to go to a non uh, 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 governmental uh, health facility, right. and it was just it was pathetic. I mean, I went into the government one, and there was bright lights and you know, clean walls and all of that. And then I go to this other doctor's office and he looked like he was, he was sitting around waiting me for me to show up. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he treat you? Oh, yeah. God, take, gave me some antibiotics, took care of the, uh, the uh, strep throat. Right. Strep throat is nasty. It is nasty. It is nasty. Um, excuse me, I'm, 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 I'm wiping my eyes because Guess what we have going on here in New York today? Well, would that be pollen? Pollen, yeah. And the pollen makes me tired all the time, too. So. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So. 
Anyway, so my eyes are tearing like crazy today. Um, sure. But I'm in a room now with air conditioning, and hopefully it will work as an air filter, and I will be better. Right. But anyway, sure so, I mean, I just don't like the way we treat old people. I mean, I happen to be an old person now, so I especially don't like it, but I never did. You right. know, and I always right. thought it was, I remember talking about this in my 30s on the air after I came back from England, and I said, the way they treat old people over there is with a great deal of reverence, and thank you so much for, you know, being part of the society and paying into it and working as part of it. Now right. you're older, let us take care of you. That's really the attitude. Right, 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 okay, right. You took care of us, now let us take care of you. Right. And we don't have that kind of attitude here. You know? No. Uh, Not at all. No, we're terrible. We're terrible. And, and, and people are living longer, which really pisses off the uh, health system. You know what I hate about certain people is they say, America is the best place on earth. And I go, have you ever been anywhere else? Right, right. You know, have you been to France? Have you been to England? Have you been to the, oh, especially the... Uh, the, Scandina the Scandinavian countries. Right, right, right. Oh, right, right. you know, come on. Right. Uh, you know, you think we're wonderful? We're, we're, we're pieces of shit here. Right. You know, we don't take care of ourselves or of each other. We don't care about each other. In those other countries, they have a, a large amount of socialism. But socialism is a way of saying we care about our citizens. Right. Right, and we right, don't right. we don't want them to be in a situation in which they can't cope, you know. We're firmly entrenched in our capitalism. Well, it's that, but it's not only that. I mean, we just have okay, if if you say what is the ultimate end game of socialism, you'd probably say, eh, maybe something like communism. If you took it just to an extreme. Right, okay, right, sure. And what, what if you took what we have to an extreme? Well, we already have that extreme now. Yes, yes you know, we do. We, it is, it is uh, capitalism to the exclusion of public welfare and the public good. I agree. And I think I the public agree. good is, should be the first thing. That's why, why are you a government? Well, ask Mitch that. Yeah. Now, having been to other countries, uh, you, 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 of course, were in France, basically, right? right? Any other countries? Uh, Switzerland. Switzerland. Oh, a nice country. Yes. Nice, neutral country. Right. You know. And I spent a lot of time up in Canada. Uh, really? Okay. Which, which most people don't consider a foreign country. But it is. It is. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, with uh, Switzerland, um, uh, they always used to say, though, well, look, the only thing they ever created of any worth was the cuckoo clock. Or the Swiss knife. Or the Swiss knife. Um, bullshit. They also created neutrality. They also, yes. And they aren't entirely neutral. I mean, people go, oh, well, they don't have an army. Yes, they do. Sure. They do. Every, In fact, every citizen, every male citizen of the country is pressed into service if they need him. Right. I think they all have a gun at home in case they have to go off marching off to war, but they, ne <laughs> but, but they never have. Right. You know, they tend to remain neutral in most cases right. because they feel that some country needs to be an arbiter. Right, I mean, that's right. And also they're surrounded by mountains, so they have a pretty good uh, defense base. Yeah, but also like for instance today, they're holding those, uh, those meetings between Putin and Biden. Where it's, is it being held? It's being held in Switzerland. Why? Because Switzerland is neutral territory. That's right. So That's it's right. very important that a country remain neutral. And there are very few... I think, I think they, they, they have three national languages in, in Switzerland. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, German, I, French, and Italian? I, um, it, it, it's, uh, they border France, yeah, France, Italy, and Germany. Right, that's what I said. German, yeah. uh, French, and, and, and Italian. And and I had a doctor come visit me at the hotel because I, always when I go to Europe I get something, you know. Right. And sure. in this case I got what was a dysentery. Oh, and nice. So, so I called a doctor and the doctor came in and it was almost like he's Swiss but he really didn't know what he was. 
Right. You know. <laughs> Gee, am I German? Am I Italian? Am, am I French? Am I French? Oh, I'll just say I'm Swiss. There you, you go. Do you know? But basically, you're a mutt. <laughs> you know? But much like much like uh, most Americans, we're all mutts. Yes. Yes. We are all mutts. But anyway, so uh, I mean, Switzerland is a uh, is a wonderful place. I I loved it. It's beautiful. I went. Do you ever go to Zermatt? I went to Zermatt. I stayed in Zermatt for a couple of days. Where they? I stayed up in the mountains in a village. Oh really? Oh, we had to walk down to the uh, local store to get your milk. You bring a a, a, a bucket, a galvanized bucket, mm -hmm. and they fill it up with milk for you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I uh, Zermatt is where the Matterhorn is. Yeah. And uh, there's no cars allowed in Zermatt. Uh, there are some oh, electric. Really? There are some electric vehicles for public utilities and things like that. But that's about right. it. And it's beautiful. It's just gorgeous. I mean, you, I wake up in the morning and there's there's the Matterhorn outside my window. Oh, you can't beat that. You know, I was either in Switzerland or Disney World. You know, I didn't know <laughs> which. <laughs> you know, but I mean, I I love I love Switzerland. It's really nice. I've never been to Disney World. Oh, really? I've been to Disneyland. Well, it's the same thing, except it's a whole world. <laughs> no, it, it, it Disneyland. The Disneyland Park is pretty much the same in Disney World as it is in Anaheim. Right. But the difference is you then have all these other worlds. You have the MGM uh, studio, you have the right. studio, you have that thing and this thing. So the, And they have Epcot, you right. know, which is all the countries of the world and so on. And it, it uh, it's, it's pretty nice all the way around, but it, it's larger. It's just a larger configuration right, of right, basically right, right. the same thing, you know. But you have been to Disneyland. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's I I don't know. I'm trying to figure out if I like Disneyland or I just laughed at it. You know. I didn't particularly care for it. I felt it was. Can I say this? I felt it was racist. Did you ever take the It's a Small World ride? Yes, and, I did. And every time you turn a corner, there's a different country of the world. And when you get to Africa, it's guys going booga 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 booga. And then when you go to Ch J J Japan, it's right, 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 right. Now it's been years since I've been there, so I wonder if they've changed that. I'm sure they have. I, I mean, it it just was a little, a little out there, okay. Oh, is hey, hey, that right? Couldn't get over it quick enough. That damn song. Oh, over and over. I remember Billy J. You know, you remember yeah. Billy J. Billy J. tells the time he went down to Disneyland or Disney World, one or the other, and took the, the ride, It's a Small World. And in the middle of it, it broke down. And he was stuck in one place. Uh, and they, it, what happened is, every time you turn a corner, there's a different portion of the song that it plays. Right. Right. He was stuck in one portion with da 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 He was in there, he said, for an hour he was ready to kill himself. I would have got out of the boat and swam. Yes. But you couldn't, but you get tackled by these dolls. I say I think they should give you like three softballs. And see how many dolls you can take out during the ride. Well, I went there during uh, during January, which is their light month, and I went on right. the on the ride. And as we turned another section there, a bunch of the dolls from the Japan thing were playing cards. It was uh, nice. <laughs> they had nothing nothing to do but just play cards. You get it? You get it? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah. They were bored. <laughs> they were yeah. really bored. Yeah, but. Uh, um, and it also, I mean, I think that it, it that you see all these countries of the world, you know, the, this pavilion. It's not like traveling elsewhere. Right. If more right. Americans were forced to leave this country at least once in their life, they'd come back with a whole different appreciation of the rest of the world. Oh, absolutely. You know? 
I'll give you an example. Um, I got a copy of Time Magazine from the States mm -hmm. and a copy of Time Magazine in Paris, mm -hmm. and they were like two different publications. Right, right. One was in French, admittedly, but, you know. Uh, no, no, it was in English. Oh, it was in English. Oh, you mean the international edition? Yes. Different, very different. The, right. The, the reference points are different. Right. Uh, let me just tell you something quickly, and then we got to go. But when uh, Ted Turner started CNN, he had a rule. He said, we never refer to other countries as them. Really? We refer to it, we, we take a world vision here in which everything's presented as part of the world. Not, you know, not them and us. Right, 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 okay. right, 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 right. Yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, uh, we've run out of time. God, Again. It, it goes by fast with you. I love yeah, too this. fast. I love this. It's really terrific. What Ladies, is this, conversation number 30? Who knows? I haven't. I'll, I'll let you know next time. I'll count them for you. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's Steve Kravitz. Bye, Steve. Bye, Alex. See you later. Bye, folks. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, uh, yes. Of course, Steve Kravitz. Uh, we always like to say how much we enjoy him, and I hope you enjoy him as well. I like him because he's smart and he's intelligent and, you know, he's uh, he's worth talking to. Yeah, yeah. So I, I hope you enjoy those little conversations we have with him. You know what I didn't do? Do you notice it's moody in here? That's because I didn't turn the lights on. <laughs> I always forget something. Okay, anyway, we got people waiting in our, uh, in our waiting room uh, to... Uh, come on here so I suppose I should do it I guess okay let me let me just uh, let all these people in and uh, oh, I'm uh, trying to admit them all here we go there we go there we go and it's uh, okay we got uh, and then I gotta do view and then I gotta do gallery okay and then I gotta go like that and there they are Folks, hello, Matt. How are you? Good to see you again. Hey, guys. Yeah. Good to see you. Where are you again, hello, Matt? Matt? Where are you calling from? I am in San Antonio, and this is my last night in Texas. The, oh, yes. You, oh, said, you, you right. said you were yeah. leaving Texas. Yeah, I'm in, uh, I'm in the living hell of packing up and all that stuff. You know? Well, uh, uh, Charlie, are you going to join him? <laughs> Where's that Let's good? go, man. <laughs> Do you do you well, well do you do you have any regrets moving back to Texas, Charlie? No, not really. Arizona wasn't any better politically than Texas. I guess not. <laughs> I guess not. I guess if you want, it, come come live in New York. Oh God, it's too expensive. <laughs> yeah, I know it's too expensive, but at least it's liberal. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, so uh, uh, when do you leave tomorrow, Matt? Yeah, I fly out tomorrow. I I'm would. going to California. California first. Stay at my parents for a couple of weeks, ah, and then go to. Where Seattle. at? Yeah. Where uh, at? They, they live in Santa Moon. And then you're then you're going to go where to live? Seattle. Seattle. That's a good yeah. town. That's a nice. Yeah, I really. I can't wait. Yeah. Where do your parents live? Uh, they're in Santa Moon. Oh, San Ramon. I'm in Fremont. Yeah. That's close. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right down the street. Yeah, yeah. right down yeah. the freeway. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good, good, good. Uh, that's terrific. Um, yep. Uh, and uh, hello uh, to uh, Al and Alan, Dr. Al. He calls himself now. Let's see here. We can see that. Yeah, there we go. Hey, Dr. Al. All right. He's not a doctor, so don't listen to any medical advice from him, okay? Because he's wrong most of the time. And, of course, uh, the lovely and attractive Jeff is with us as well. And I'm hopefully we'll be joined by other people as well. <laughs> Remember last night I, I took this stuff and I scrunched it in my hand and then I put it in all scrunched? See what happens when it just sits there? Wow. It just gets all flat. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, then I, I can pull it out and I can start playing with it again. You know? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Squeezing yeah. it. Yeah. We've got the yellow. I've got the this color, although this color is close enough to green that it's kind of uh, you can kind of uh, 
You, you know, it's kind of well, like a green screen. But you only have a you only have the two ounce. I got the three ounce. Oh well. Oh jeez. Fits. <laughs> oh my god. Hand. It fits my hand bigger. You what are you know? trying to say that you're 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 better than I am? No, mine's bigger than. It yours. looks like a used condom. Oh well. Uh, okay. <laughs> But in your case, I'm sure you don't have any used condoms. Anyway, um, probably not. Probably, probably not. not. Um, boy, I, hmm? I love how people that know very little about the medical community, like the Republicans, yeah, always think that everybody else is wrong. And it kind of surprises me that Alex mm -hmm. doesn't understand that Alan has a degree in biology, and. I would love to send you something. I just got something from the Mayo Clinic, an hour-long thing about COVID and the variances and stuff like that done by a doctor, and I will bet you you don't understand. I bet you I don't get through the first five minutes of it. You wouldn't understand. It's got a lot of graphs, and you need to you need to be smart like me. Anyway. I see. I see. Uh, well, I, I'm not a practicing doctor. I mean, I, I was never a doctor. No. Except for when I was a little kid with my girlfriend. You know, I think we were six and we played doctor. Yeah, you played doctor. Yeah. But anyway, I, I, oh. I'm squeezing this on my hand tonight. At that. <laughs> I feel like, uh, what's his name uh, in uh, Kane Mutiny Court Martial? You know. You know, something you were marbles. talking to Stephen Kravitz about mm -hmm. that is very true. How we treat older people in this country. Oh, it's terrible. It is. It's just terrible. And it I'm is. not saying that because I'm older, okay? I'm not uh, suddenly jumping on that bandwagon because I'm older because I, I was always griping about this 30 years ago when I was uh -huh. on the air and about how we treat uh, uh, old people in our country. Yep. Uh, we treat them like crap. Yep. Either sure. that or if you're going to be nice to them, they we have to pay them to be nice to us like they like Tony. Tony's a professional old person yeah. uh uh sympathizer. How much coffee <laughs> do you have, Tony? <laughs> <laughs> Tony's mother life. died and he lost his job. How's that? You know, I still can't get over that really. They didn't put the uh they didn't etch her name yet in the stone, Alex. Like, they didn't etch your name yet in the stone? I paid them in full, but they said because of COVID, it is so bad. Well, you know, you have to get one that isn't already there. Right? No, no. <laughs> no, they, they actually, it's there. They got to add her name to it, really. But they said because of COVID, they're so backed up. They're, yeah. they're, okay, well, they'll get around to it. Yeah, yeah that's what I figured. I was Why don't you just go get one of those label makers and put her name and stick it on the <laughs> Yeah, that's still. a cheap way of doing oh, it. How much? Are, let me just ask you for the fun of it here. How much are they going to charge you? To oh, add? you can tell to it add costs, the, it, yeah, almost a thousand dollars. Your father's name is already there, right? My dad's name is there. Yeah. Yeah. And so what you got to do is just add your mother's name. I think it was like eight fifty. I'd have to ask my brother. Yes, but really? paid the other half. Off. Really? How long is yeah. that going to take them to do? You know, the lady told me they well they can't. I would say maybe a day, Alex, if you're lucky. Because how long did it take? Because I was figuring when I was in the cemetery, I actually saw them going like because I was walking around like you know we put flowers down. Mm -hmm. I saw them like you couldn't go near them, but they were working on somebody's stone, and I was like, wow. So that kind of I can't see it taking you know that long really. I would guess a couple of hours. I mean, I could ask you. I would guess a couple hours. Yeah. You know, you know what it is when people die. Uh, I can't even put a even put a tombstone on my mother's grave yet. Terrible me. Okay. I believe, then I yeah. found out. Was it you, Charlie? Who told me that you hadn't put a tombstone. Mm -hmm. Somebody told me on this show that they no, hadn't put a tombstone no. on their mother's grave either. Either. So I don't feel so bad. He can not take care of the elderly. Well, it's or she's not dead. elderly. She's dead, <laughs> oh, <okay>. Alan. <laughs> Um, uh, but you know the right, thing right, is, right, what right. they what they do is they've got you in this situation in which you're bereaved and you don't you want to do the best by the loved one so mm. they overcharge you for the grave and they overcharge you for the tombstone mm. and they overcharge you for this they ch overcharge you for everything because they've got you by the gonads yeah you know and, yeah. and it, that's wrong it's terrible you know so uh 
I, 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 it, it does it does bother me. It shouldn't cost him, you know. It should cost him fifty bucks, you know, something go like that. Get a stencil kit and a can of spray paint. You, you know, go 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 buy a chisel he's, he's and do 50 it. Nine hundred. I, I have the bill downstairs because we paid it in yeah. two installments. They wanted half, and then we paid the other half of like a. Well, you like can probably have your wife take care of it here. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Uh, your wife. Oh, Tony? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's his we, mother. We put my, Alex's it, picture in the dining they're, room. They're backed up <laughs> on, on chiseling names. In, uh, you know, what? It, it, oh, not only the stone is getting chiseled, but you are as well. Exactly. Think about yeah, that. Really. Yeah. It's and then really medically, weird. he'll be fine. I mean, fuck, half my family. Rubber gloves. <laughs> Anytime you have surgery, it's a Halstead clamp, baby. You are gonna be just fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Her, her, uh, what is it? Uh, a, a great uncle, a grandfather, something. Yep, right? William Stewart Halstead invented the rubber gloves. Well, oh. um, he telegraphed the Goodyear company because his assistant surgeon, yeah. when she would dip her hands in the carbolic acid, it would mm. irritate her. Oh. He, he ended up marrying her, so he telegraphed the Goodyear company, asked if they could make a, a pair of rubber gloves, tip to elbow, but not so thick that they lose tactile function. Mm -hmm. And uh, they sent him two pair, and the rest is history. What turned him on about your uh, his his wife to be the fact that she dipped her hands in carbolic acid? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, she probably <laughs> fell in love with him because he cared about her. He knew a lot and about she rubber. Said, she said, I see a lot of money in those rubber gloves. Absolutely. Well, she came from a wealthy family, too, so. Yeah, oh. yeah. But, and then he also Carolyn had. Carolyn Hampton. Hamptons? Hampton. Yeah. 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 I heard the person that, that, that developed the rubber gloves, this may or may not be true, I don't know, also developed three or four other useful items, including true rubber condoms which are i understand not very comfortable and that's well, why the, her, like, her, uh, what is it your great uncle what 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 is what yeah was he's it? like my he's my great 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 uncle yeah great great, great uncle invented the rubber gloves for surgery that's he yeah he you know yeah. telegraphed the goodyear company and he introduced them into surgery anytime you have surgery i guarantee you it's a halstead clamp that's clamping you he also invented doing this with your hands uh, <laughs> that's how they what? put the, the yeah, gloves yeah, on. Cool. Get the joke. That's how they how they put the gloves on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thought it'd just be funny there for. You a know, second. you were talking about socialized medicine. Man, go to Mexico. Socialized medicine is all bad. Oh, well, of course. But all medicine is bad down there. Yep. Apparently, Canada too. Because no, I have oh, Canadian no. friends that oh, come to oh, America. Oh, no, 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 no. I've heard from oh, people. Yeah, they do. I've heard from people in Canada. Where, where's Trucker Steve? I saw he was trying to get on tonight, yeah. and he didn't. Uh, Canadians live three years longer than Americans on average, so there's no way their medical system is worse than ours. I'm sorry. That's right. Apparently, to them, it's comparable. Well, no, they. I don't know what. Not to everybody, but I've had some friends that are like, oh, hell well, no. I've talked to other people from Canada who say it is just the best. Well, yeah. I, I think it depends on what type of medicine. So I have a friend of mine that was Canadian 20 years ago mm -hmm. and had a suspected brain tumor and had a two year wait to get an MRI. So he went over to Seattle, got the MRI, took the results back to his doctor and they did the surgery and saved his life. So I don't think it was socialized medicine they tend not to invest heavily in really expensive equipment. No, that's, that's not Republican true. Republican propaganda. That is absolutely that is not true. If there's anything life-threatening, there is no weight in Canada. Really? I've, I've heard I've heard from people mm -hmm. in Canada that I've known who said they did not have to wait for a procedure. The only kind of procedures that you have to wait for are elective procedures. Elective. Yeah. They put the non-elective procedures, the life-threatening. Uh, uh, operations and so on, the ones that will save your life right to the front of the line. That's why they live longer than us, because they don't have to worry about, oh, I might go bankrupt, so I'm not going to yeah, the doctor but, you know, yet, if, if, by the time you do, you're, you're, you're terminal. 
So I got a message from one of our listeners, Phil Meyer. He says, Canadian. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, Phil Meyer. I'm going to listen to <laughs> I'm him. I'm going to believe oh, Phil yeah. Meyer. Phil <laughs> Meyer got no <laughs> shit about he's, he's being He's making a joke here. He says, Canadians have to wait in line to die. That's why they live three years longer. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, it's kind of funny. That is funny. Okay. I'll have to admit that's funny, Phil. Ha ha! I'm Alex laughing. Is funny. I don't know why. Yeah. He's funny, Alex. What? With you. what? I actually find Phil very funny. Don't I don't know, encourage like, I him. Show, don't encourage him. I, I tell that to Kathleen. He is funny, though. I don't know why. He is why. funny. He is and funny. he's actually a really nice like, guy. Like, two together are funny. Yeah. I can't see you be like... In my head, like, remember you told the story that he stayed at your apartment? I could see you coming home, I was telling Kathleen, and Phil on the couch is like, don't you leave? Did you ever yell at him? Like, like what is he doing this? Oh, by the way, you know I'm doing an interview tomorrow with uh, for the show Ooh. for tomorrow night? Uh, Bobby Slayton. So. Oh, he's oh, funny, okay. right? Yeah, yeah. He was dead. Huh? What? That's I thought good. somebody said he was dead. No, oh, no. God. Somebody <laughs> wished he was dead? Is that what? That was, that was on Curb Your Enthusiasm. <laughs> he does a Skechers commercial for a Skechers. He does he Skechers, Skechers radio commercials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He does them. Uh, and he's in the latest Woody Allen movie, too. Mm -hmm. he, he, don't blink, but Woody he's Allen's in the latest Woody Allen movie. What? Woody Allen is still alive? Oh, yes, he's still alive. Yes, there are a lot of people <laughs> who are still alive. I'm still alive. Yeah, could have fooled me. <laughs> It must be because you're from Canada or so close to Canada. I don't know. Okay. I went and took my walk today, and I was, I was lightheaded throughout the entire walk. I don't know what it was. I think I think part of it has to do with well, I think there's a, 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 it's it, there there it, it, there's pollen out there, and it it really affects me, you know, my eyes, and so the oh. eyes kind of get blurry, and then it get yeah, yeah. anyway. Why am I complaining? I'm still I know you won't believe me, but it sounds like you have allergies, Alex. Well, could does, be. Yeah. Could be. I know I do. You know, I, in fact, I turn on the air conditioning in here now just to kind of yeah, purify the air so I don't yeah. uh, I don't get the allergies as badly while I'm doing the show. Alex, during but, the summer, you know what I do? I don't even open the windows that much in my house. You know, I, I try to tell my wife. I she goes. She goes. It's 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 a beautiful day out there. We have to open the windows and make, oh. let fresh air in. And I go. No, I know. Oh, you know. No, I no. said, "Do you wonder why your eyes are burning? Do you mother, wonder you why me. you're sneezing? You wonder why allergies are getting to you? Because you're leaving the window open. Yeah, I, it, my eyes can get really bad. That I, like, yeah, I usually I leave it closed. And then, then we went out. I went out and bought an air purifier. Right. Yeah. Well, it doesn't do much good if you leave the window open. No, it's good if it nope. hurt. That's why I put the air in. You know, what you want to do is close the window, close the door. Put it outside the... the window and see if it works. Yeah, right. I wonder, <laughs> I wonder uh, uh, maybe somebody can answer this for me. Uh, does anybody here have a humidifier? My mother used to. It might be in her closet. Do you have a pull humidifier? Pull and does anybody here have a dehumidifier? Because my question is, what happens if you put both of them in the same room? <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll and some some of the other. I mean, do you, do you create this nexus, and then this black yeah. hole is created? So this this is this you, is you, nothing. You get a tornado. This is something you'll you'll be able to understand, Alex. A, an air conditioner takes the moisture out of the air. Would you agree yeah. on that? Yes, it does. Well, Good. no, it does and, if you set it to. No, you don't need to set it to. No, just you can. Moisture. You have to. You have to. So, so there's moisture. I don't know if your air conditioner is central or through the window or what, but air conditioners, you see condensation leaving the air conditioner, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's because the condensation in the air goes across the coils. Well, I think I think you, with an air conditioner, but, it, but it, let's just basically just, it blows out cold air. Just just for just for sake, let's say that it 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 makes the air drier. I don't care what setting you have it on. And yeah. so a humidifier would put humidity back in the air, right? Yeah. A humidifier puts, it, it literally That's takes right. so liquid. So you really have a dehumidifier when you run the air conditioner. No, but, no, but you're, you're, you're adding, uh, yes, but the reason why you should have a humidifier is it's better for your skin and for your breathing and things like that. 
I have a, several of them. And a dehumidifier takes all the humidity out of the room. Now, just because you have a humidifier doesn't mean you're adding a lot of humidity. You're just adding a trace of... Uh, Charlie has his hand up, and Charlie is always, because he is he is uh, schooled in the, in the science and so on. Yeah, because uh, the, the way it works is that cold air can hold less water than hot air. So if you've got hot air that you cool down, the water is going to condense out of the air, and then when that air gets blown back in the apartment and it gradually warms up, the water has gone already. So now your air in the house is drier, and that's why you have to have a humidifier too. Yeah, see? Put he just, he just explained what an air conditioner does. Matt, did you pack up your humidifier and your dehumidifier? Uh, in Texas, we we have plenty of humidity. Oh, yeah, we don't oh have God. To worry about oh, it. God, yes. <laughs> I remember living in Texas and not being able to keep a crease in my pants for the entire yeah. time I lived there. Yeah. You know? I mean... It's more the it's more the flooding that I don't like than the humidity. But the yeah. flooding is terrible. Uh, you know, well, Especially in Houston. If you really had your dehumidifiers working, there wouldn't be flooding. Yeah. <laughs> just a, just a, a random theory I have here. You know. But uh, anyway, so listen, today, uh, uh, did you see uh, Biden in uh, Geneva? Yes. What, what happened? Oh, oh, t- Tony, Tony, <laughs> Tony, Tony, Fofo thing, Banana Fana Fofi. Uh, Tony. There was a, uh, a a little gathering a meeting in Geneva Ooh. between our president. You know who our president is, don't you? <laughs> yeah, his, his speech is yeah. getting yeah. yeah. Uh, Chuck Biden. Chuck yeah. Biden. Uh, <laughs> he he met with uh, uh, Vladimir Putin oh, today okay. in Trump Geneva. Trump yeah, yeah. And uh, it sounded sounded to me like nothing happened. Is what it sounds like. How how'd you take it, Charlie? What was your? Feeling? Well, I haven't watched the news today. I just I just just before I came on, I saw a, a blurb about uh, Putin uh, commenting on on that, and he said he talked about their families and stuff. So I, it sounded like he didn't really discuss anything. Didn't get anything done. No. Yeah. Did, did you check in on any of that, Jeff? Yeah, I did, and uh, I, I don't think they accomplished anything. Could, well, maybe they, it was like a meet and greet. Yeah. I, th- I think yeah. they both agree Trump was an idiot. N- no. <laughs> no. <laughs> N- well, I'm, I think that deep down, Putin believes yeah. that Trump's an idiot. But yeah, he, he was Putin's idiot. Yeah. See, so yeah. therefore he was valuable. Absolutely. You and know? now that he's no longer president, you know. Time to kick the trash out. Do do you, do you guys feel that maybe uh, 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 Biden is being a little too acerbic with uh, with Putin? I mean, calling him a killer, I think, is no way to open a meeting. He said that. No, he didn't say it to Putin. No, he didn't say he it to his it face. To, to the news. He said it to the news media, and, then, and, wide, and right? I, I guess that you have to kind of expect that might get back to Putin. You know. Yeah, but they asked him, "Do you think Putin's a killer?" And he just he had to help, had to tell the truth, so he said yes. He oh god. Mm-hmm. Well, you mm-hmm. don't have to be that honest. You know. I mean, honest. Is there anybody here that doesn't think Putin has killed his political rival? Trump. Well, I think he just got cranky. <laughs> yeah, right. I think he just got cranky, and everybody does now and then. <laughs> oh, God. Who is cranky? Putin. The head of the KGB got cranky. Well, you That's don't want the job. head of the KGB to get cranky. Yeah. That's his permanent job. Yeah. Be cranky. To be cranky. And he's not even Jewish. Yeah. That's right. But uh, I, I think it was just kind of like a, an opening. What it was, it was a meeting for them to have so they could lay some some <clears throat> ground, not ground rules, but uh, uh, l- 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 set the landscape for future meetings between lower people doing these things. <clears throat> and then maybe they'll come together and agree or disagree on the things they've agreed or disagreed on, <clears throat> you know. 
But uh, I, I just like the fact that we had a president there that didn't look all hangdog because of Putin. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you know what bothered Horrible me? What bothered much. me, I watched Fox because I wanted to see how they were going to parse the whole oh. thing, right? Because if I go watch MSNBC, I know what they're going to say. Oh, Biden really read, read him the riot act and so on and so forth. <laughs> and they're taking the position that Biden looked tired and old. Now, mm -hmm. that bothers me because they're being ageist. They're simply reading into his a certain kind of he's always kind of been that way you know because he always had a stutter and so he's always kind of been that way and i just i don't know i just found it i don't know I, off putting but then again fox off putting come on you know but they That's spent the whole stuff. time just oh well he didn't get anything accomplished and he did do something strange mm -hmm. they mentioned it he he told him uh here are the things you can't hack and then he gave him a list of things you can't hack hospitals electric companies this thing that thing you know blah 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 blah. and quite frankly i think it's stupid to give them a list of things you can't hack just say don't hack anything <laughs> you know i mean maybe you know he, me? he, he didn't say don't hack alex bennett's raid you know <laughs> uh, uh, i guess I guess what I find funny about this, it's not funny, but I, I don't know, I, I, saying we, we hacked them too. We, you know, our government, the CIA goes into their stuff to, for, for, to get information on them and stuff like that. And sometimes, uh, you do know, we hold it for ransom? Well, I don't, prob I don't know. Probably not. No, not probably, probably not. not. We don't. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm no matter what the, we say, Putin and his folks are going to always hack. Just like communist absolutely. China, just like North Korea. Yep, totally agree. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think we should be hacking back. I do think we should be hacking back. We are hacking back. No, we're not yeah, hacking. I'm sure Apparently we are. not that well. It's part of how the you know? gathering. Yeah, how do you know? Because I tried to hack the Soviet Union down. just the other day and did a lousy job of it. Okay. <laughs> but if uh, my brother can hack Facebook and you know, especially the jackasses that have it on their phones, especially Apple, and he can go, "Hey, Kath, watch this," and next thing you know, we're listening to people's conversations. I mean, what do you think we can do? Oh, I want to meet your brother. Oh, I yeah. love my brother. I go, do any of your friends fear you? And he goes, fuck, I don't know why. Is, it, is this the guy that works for the movie company? No, this is my big brother. I don't your think you ever met him. No, because yeah. the, the, your your other brother works over at ILM, and yeah. he's a big computer guy, too. Yeah, but, you know, he's not in the game. My older brother and I were like the black sheep of the family for a while, but my older brother, mm -hmm. holy shit. Some wow. of the stuff can do boy i wish i i wish i knew some people could do some real good hacking i would love to get even with all these uh, people who do the robo calls oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, go, go find a 14 year old on the street they're good at i it. mean if, if if russia wants to hack somebody go after the robo call people and hold them for ransomware and the okay? extended car warranty people oh they, well that's oh that's right <laughs> Why is I mean, it? the what? soft hmm? the software I that my brother's installed on my computer. If anybody hacks it, what it does is the the cat follows the mouse back to the den and blows up the motherboard, and then they get a new computer and it blows up the motherboard, and it just keeps going. What they don't realize is it's attached to their ISP, so they're going to have to move <laughs> if they don't want their motherboards all or, how many or get, ever blown to shit. Or go to AT and T. How do I ISP. how do I hire your brother? Yeah, I, <laughs> you got to get in line. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it says Putin takes a percentage of cut from the hacking mobs. No, he doesn't have to. He doesn't oh. have to. Do you know what five million dollars is to Putin? Nothing. Fuck you, money. 
That's right. Do you know how much he's yeah, worth? That's may, nothing. He yeah. may be worth close to two hundred billion dollars. Yeah. Really? Yes. Yeah, hey, wow. but you know, a couple more quarters can't can't be bad. A couple more what? Quarters, quarters can't be bad. A couple Come on. more quarters. Okay. Yeah. If you, you say we need a couple of quarters. That's uh, that's okay yep. with me. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, I, I just felt what was going on today was just it, nothing much. But you know what I love, though? I was, watching, I was watching MSNBC and then CNN and then, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, Fox. And it was kind of all of them were sitting there while the meeting was going on inside, just talking it up, just kind of ginning it up and keeping it going and talking about what might be going on in there and not going on in there. And all I thought of were a bunch of kids who were told by the adults to stay in the car. You know, is that how it felt to you? It was like, yeah, well, we're good. we can't go inside, so we're going to sit out here and figure out what might be going on in there because mom and dad won't let us join them for the party. You know. Mm -hmm. But they're talking I, adult stuff. Yeah, they're talking. They're talking adult stuff, right? So, so you didn't know this was going on, Tony. No, actually. Yeah, you're spending too much time with those comic books. Yeah, was and coffee. Hmm? I'm watching it for we'll him. Send you samples of coffee. <laughs> I mean, Putin basically called us enemies. Yeah. Well, we kind of are to him. Well, yeah. To him, uh, he also he said something interesting. You know, this guy in Navalny. Not Navalny. What's his name? The uh, Navalny. The Navalny. Yeah. Um, he, he, I loved hearing his take on it because his take was that Navalny wanted to be arrested because, oh. and, and it makes sense. I mean, that he might want to be arrested because that then makes him a cause celeb, right? So that's his take on it. He said he, he only got what he wanted, you know, but. He didn't do anything. What did Thank he do you, Charlie. Thank you. No, I, I agree with you on that, but I'm saying that once he became a cause celeb, he could look. He didn't have to go back to Russia. He could have stayed in London or wherever he was where he uh, got better and, and never gone back, but he went back. Knowing full well he was going to get arrested. I mean, come on. You, yeah. you know, what? Putin's not going to do something about you? Come on. So when he says he wanted to get arrested, I think he did. Okay. Um, well, it's like Martin Luther King. He wanted to get arrested when exact, he was Well, there, there, there's another good example of it. But, but, but you, I don't think we're going to torture Martin Luther King when well, he was I, arrested. Well, I, mean, I agree, but I'm just saying that wanting to get arrested is to bring light on the fact that, that mm. you get, you're, you're being abused, you're being uh, yep. oppressed. Your rights are being abridged. Yep. Yep. Okay, but here, here's the other thing he brought up, which I thought was kind of interesting. First of all, there's something very interesting about Putin. He seems to know a lot about the United States and about the way our politics are. He knows about the Senate. He knows about the Congress. He knows the relationships of them to mm -hmm. each other. I've heard him talk about this before. Yeah. Uh, he's very knowledgeable, more knowledgeable about us than we probably are about him. He would uh, make a good. He would make a good uh, leader of the CIA. Exactly. Oh, but anyway, KGB. He's very smart. Smart. But anyway, t t his whole take on June, uh, January sixth. Did you hear the, his take on it? Oh, what bullshit! I yeah. know. Yeah. I know that uh, the, the uh, you, you shouldn't arrest people who are protesting your government. Wait a minute, where's Navalny now, or Navalny, or whatever his name yeah. is? He, he seems Navalny to... never smashed any windows to, to, exactly. to try and exactly. hang any of the leaders. He tried right. to say this was a protest against our government. No, all it wasn't. The, all the people in Russia that did something like that to Russia, to Parliament, or whatever they Would be called, dead right now. Would be dead. dead. Yeah. That's yeah. right. I mean, it's yeah. just we like have in China, so same thing. Just yeah. like... Iran and North Korea, their people wouldn't yep. touch that with a 10-foot pole. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Same with Pakistan, same with Egypt. I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, hey, hey, John, got your, got your, what is that? That's the, is that the guitar? Oh, it's a. Wow, mandolin. A mandolin. 
Mandolin, yeah. yes. Have you learned to play any of these instruments? No, that's what I told you. I'm a hoarder of musical instruments. Yeah, I mean, uh, you look like you just go, hey, don't I look cool with this mandolin? <laughs> hey, it's a, this is one of the hardest instruments in the world to fucking learn to play. Well, I think maybe you, maybe you should start with the ukulele and work your way up, you know? Watch, watch Deliverance. Huh? Uh, he looks like Pearl Hines. Yeah, you know, he looks like, yeah, he, you ever yeah. see Miracle Pearl on 30 Wall Street? Yeah. And I have the Miracle on 31st with Natalie Wood. He looks like Santa Claus a little bit, like the actor. I don't know who plays him, though. Who, who, I have to look that up. I have to say. Somebody. Because he's got the face. Somebody said you look like Well, you know who looks like Santa Claus is Kevin. Yeah. Yeah, but he looks like the actor from the Natalie Wood movie, Miracle on 34th Street. I always yeah. think of that. And he looks oh, like Monty Lives. Williams. Yeah. Yeah, every time I see him, well, I always think of that actor. That was Edmund him. Gwynn. It was Edmund Gwynn. Was that Edmund Gwynn? That was another yeah. movie that Monty Woolley played the Santa in. Uh, no, well, I don't think so. That was some silver and gold. No, he didn't. Monty Woolley, I don't think, ever played Santa. Uh oh, Oxcar Willie. He played the man who came to dinner, you know, but he never. How do I know okay. these things? Well, folks? If you hear about you know more about that than I do. Yeah, but great, uh, great uh, actors of the '70s just passed away. One of the great character actors, Ned Beatty. No, Gavin oh. McLeod. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, that was a couple of weeks ago. But that was a couple of weeks. That was several weeks ago. Just wasn't kidding. It? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Last yeah, night, by the way, last, last night, by the way, uh, Jack Bishop had some information which he didn't really get right. Betty White did do her first television show in 19... Uh, th uh, uh, he said 39. Uh, 1939. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, but it was just an appearance singing on an experiment of the TV system. She did not appear in a regular television show till about 15 years <laughs> later. Okay, so his attitude that oh he she he was on the first TV show ever you blah 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 no, she, there was an experimental show they needed some people to come in and perform she and her, some girlfriends came in and sang, and that was she was like uh, she was only like five years old at the time <coughs> or something like that you know. But the, the impression was given that she had started, yeah. you know, literally started then. No, she didn't. She didn't really get into TV until she did a show out of uh, L.A. with a guy by the name of Al Jarvis, and it was on for five hours a day. <laughs> and, 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 and yeah, well, I mean, it was you know, uh, they had a lot of free time on television in those days, yeah. right? And so she did the she did the Al Jarvis show and learned everything she needed to learn about TV from Al Jarvis. So that that there was how that worked. There that is. What? <laughs> <laughs> and I actually have the black and white version on this and the but, color. Yeah. Closer. Uh, you, that's Edmund yeah, Gwen. Gwen here, that's right? Edmund Gwen. Yes. Okay. It looks like him, doesn't it? No. Huh? I, when I first saw it, I always really thought of that actor. Here. My beard is really trimmed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He, he doesn't look like Santa. No, no. But if you want him to, he will. Pearl Ives, though. He looks like... Pearl oh, Ives, totally. actor out Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I want to ask this guy something. So uh, so do you, do you have a note uh, from your from your doctor, uh, Brian, that says uh, you can come late to the show? Yes. <laughs> I know what it is out there. Can't show you. Look but, at uh, it. It's it's sunny. Yeah. It's beautiful out there. You should be out yeah. there rather than talking. It's hot to, out there. Doing this piece of shit. No, yeah. actually, it's not hot. It's really nice and cool down right now. Mm. It's hot in Texas yeah. now. Well, of course, <laughs> Texas. <laughs> this is uh, oh man. Oh, there you go. A little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. That's, oh, that's beautiful. It's beautiful. beautiful. It's lovely. I uh, I I, uh, I took a very nice walk. It was very nice. It was very nice walking weather today, actually. Good. Uh, not humid, you know. And right now it's not humid at all in New York. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, uh, we're we're supposed to we're supposed to get hotter next week, I think. So. Uh, yeah, we're hot uh, today and tomorrow. Next day is like a hundred degrees around here. So. Yeah. We love talking about the weather here. Oh, here comes Irv Jackson, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh oh, mention his name. Well, he's got to be mad. Uh, uh, Jack Bishop. 
Hello, Jack. Oh, I mean, he's got to connect his audio. Um, the only person who knows less about computers than than uh, uh, than Jeff is Jack. So, <laughs> hello, Jack. Can you hear us, <clears throat> Jack? Can you hear us? Nod yes if you can, no if you can. 100 degrees around here. So. He's connecting his audio. There he is. Now we can hear him. Can you hear us? Who's us? Oh, okay. There. He's <laughs> up. He could hear us. By the way, did you get my message I left you on your, uh, on your uh, thing last night? You mean the one about Jack Benny's daughter dying? Yeah, she died over the weekend. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I didn't get it from you. Uh, I think it was Mike that mentioned that. Mike Lally, yeah. yeah. Mike did. Yeah. But I wanted to correct your correction. What I said about <laughs> Betty White was that in 1939, she was in ex doing experimental TV, but it was only after World War II that she did the five-hour show out of L.A. Yes, okay. It's not like I ran them together and... Well, usually your information's all wrong anyway. Oh, that's so. true. But, but then again, you were there running the camera for that experimental no, uh, time. And, and <laughs> she, 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 you told me that I actually had met Jack Benny's daughter, and he's right. We had went out to something out in New Jersey that Shecky went to, and she was there, and I got to meet her that way back when. Hmm. But well, that's, not like, that's not like that's not like me. Huh? Didn't you write the joke, I'm thinking, I'm thinking? I'm thinking no, it over. I'm, I'm thinking it over. The line <laughs> is, I'm thinking it over. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's funny. When so Jack, the money of your life, right? Somebody once told me that when Marconi was testing wireless, you were the kid under the table turning the crank to create electricity. And you said, Mr. Marconi, if I were you, I wouldn't call it wireless because of all of these wires. I'd call it uh, radio. You notice that uh, nobody's <laughs> laughing at that. You know why? Because you're making fun of the old guy. Yeah. And you're talking about how old is he? So old that Marconi, he must have been with Marconi when Marconi was inventing radio. You weren't? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Listen, hey, you know, you, you it's, know not like, it's not like you're a spring chicken. I got. I'm so much not like a spring chicken. Even my spring uses a crutch. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I mean, you know, I, 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 I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting older. You know. Well, look at it this way. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. You and Charlie Watts are the same age. You know, the drummer for the Stone. Mm -hmm. Two are about mm -hmm. the same age. Yeah. Mick is older than I am. Keith is dead, but his brain has been so <laughs> his body doesn't know it. Yeah, but I've never measured my life by the Rolling Stones. <laughs> the only one who's gone is was it Brian? Uh, Brian Jones, right? Brian they Jones. Kind of, yeah, they thought he was murdered. In, in the uh, well, he drowned in the pool. Was was he did, they died. thought it might have been foul play? I thought. That's yeah. what, was that but, but now you realize here. That it, and this is something I've had to point out to Jack on several occasions, that we're talking about kids, the Rolling Stones. Uh, and in most cases, you ask an average kid in his 20s about the Rolling Stones, and they go, who are they? Yeah. I mean, you may not believe that, uh, but that's the way, you know, time passes. I've got a buddy who's got a 48-year-old son. And he calls the Stones and the Beatles and many of the groups that you and I loved, calls that geezer rock. I agree with him. It is. You know. <laughs> do you know, I never, what do you think I listen, when I'm walking around every day, I put on my earphones, my wireless earphones, and I put on my iPhone, and I listen to music. What do you think I listen to? I haven't got the foggiest. Big band. Big band. Big band. Hmm? 50s music. Go back, you go back further. You listen to Big Ben? I, mean, I, listen to, I listen to a lot of stuff that happened before I was even born. I, I listen to Duke Ellington from the Cotton Club. And, well, same here, same here. And, and stuff like that. I like uh, Charlie Parker, Miles Davis. Yep. yep. All that old. Yep. 
Keep but they were, they were almost, uh, you know, I, uh, um, of course, nothing but Sinatra all the time on my, on my except mm -hmm. not late Sinatra, not uh, as he got older, because he got terrible. Uh, but uh, early on, uh, terrific mm -hmm. stuff, you know. Yeah. But I, but I, 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 I especially like uh, Cab Calloway, uh, Duke Ellington, Count Basie, you know, that <laughs> stuff. That's, that's, that's my listening stuff. I don't really care that much about listening to the Rolling Stones or the Beatles. I kind of, I had all I had to have of them when they were, when I was growing up, you know. And I listened to them and I liked them, but then I got over them and, you know. I can't tell the difference between rap. It all sounds the same to me. Well, yeah. I understand rap. I, I yeah. like some rap, you know. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Listen, this is the black guy talking. Charlie, verify this for me. <laughs> he, he is a black guy. Uh, I am too. Only on the outside. No. What's my real name? Oh, wait, What's oh, my no, real no. name? Schwarzman. Schwarzman. And what is that in German? Black man. Black okay, man. so <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> you got that so Charlie, my girlfriend sees you with your shirts all the time, and she got me a new shirt. <laughs> I figured everybody on the show would understand that. And we understand your girlfriend's funnier than you. No, probably. Paddle faster, I hear banjos. Great. Great. Yeah. Give me your give me your shirt size, Alex. We'll send you one. No, that's okay. I mean, oh. now that I've seen it, I don't want to have something somebody else has got. Send me something that I don't know about. You have to be a certain age to understand that joke, though. By yeah. the way, I, I, I figured everybody on the show would understand it. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe not. Maybe not, Matt. Matt's pretty young. Oh, no, I get it. I get. It. I've seen it. Yeah? I've seen okay. it. Alan and uh, <laughs> Alan and uh, Phil, uh, send me gifts. You know, and like I got this stuff from Phil, right? What did you, you send me? You sent me something a while back, Alan, didn't you? Oh well, I sent you a Biden Harris hat. Yeah, uh, I sent you some monkey powder, monkey butt powder, yeah, something monkey like butt that. powder. The dude wipes. Dude wipes. I sent you. You sent me the know? dude wipes. You know. See, I take care of the elderly. I send them gifts. But I, I need something to help with my hypogonadism. <laughs> I try an allergy pill. Yeah, right. Yeah, yes, uh, the man with his pinky up in the air. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to sell Alex a T-shirt that is so in that only his radio buddies will get it, send him a T-shirt that says, I knew Bill Drake when he got chased to uh, oh, Fresno. <laughs> I, I just, you know... If yeah, you're gonna good. pull a joke, pull something I that every that. everybody here would understand. I said that only your only your radio friends would get. I don't have any radio friends. <laughs> me, you don't talk to anybody. <laughs> no, in the business. no, I, no, I don't. In only that case, fuck you, fuck oh, you. Only man. there's fuck only you. one guy in the business that I talk to to this me. day, oh. and that's because he has me do his show on uh, across the country whenever he goes on vacation, and that's why from Walter Sabo. Well, you don't consider me a friend from... Not at all. No. no. <laughs> On that note... <laughs> Jack, we've, we found out we're not friends either with him. Oh, good. Yeah, so we... Wait a minute. Yeah. When, when did you find that out, Brian? You said that a while back. No, I just... What I said was friends are people... I don't say everybody's my friend. You know, people always say, oh, I know so-and-so, he's my friend. Mm. No, I mean, I'm sorry, you know. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I met and interviewed Jimmy Carter. That doesn't make him my friend. Oh, I, right? Really you know, uh, I, you know, so I, you know, I, I, I interviewed uh, J Jerry Seinfeld. I, I don't consider him my friend. But some people will go, oh, my friend Jerry Seinfeld. Mm. Man, that's ridiculous. A friend is somebody who you can count on, who counts on you, and that you, you have this ongoing, you know, relationship with. And so I don't consider a lot of people my friend. I think I only have, like, really one... I have a couple of friends, I guess, you know. Close friends. Yeah, Close. yeah, but, I mean, people that I would call friends. <clears throat> Associates, people that are acquaintances, people I like, people I enjoy having around, <clears throat> fine. 
But it, when I say friend, that's something that's a very personal term to me. I yeah. think it's much more intimate than most people. Well, uh, the, and we and so we, and we cheapen those things. You know, yeah. we cheapen the word friend. So you uh, talk about intimate. Is my hand my friend? Absolutely. Yes. And it, we, I, we might add your only friend. Maybe so. <laughs> you yeah. know. Uh, but. Uh, uh, the world according to Alex. You know, I mean, um, uh, I mean, I, I consider uh, uh, Schmoody my friend because I've known her for so, so long. And, hey, you know, sweetie. we did have yeah. a very close personal relationship, you know. Uh, uh, and, and so, uh, you know, I mean, I consider her a, a friend. Is she uh, here tonight on the panel? Because I don't see yeah, her. Yeah, she's right there. Right there. She's Most the one that's with the red face. face. Sorry we couldn't get you on my show Friday night, but you're always welcome. Maybe, maybe she doesn't want to go on your show. Maybe she just <laughs> comes here. She missed her chance. You know, she had a chance to break up the, the sausage party one night that I have. Yeah. And say la vie. Yeah. Speaking about that. I got to see a lot of my ass on out of here. Really? Here. Oh, here. that's too bad because I've so enjoyed this. I enjoy our sp special time together between friends. Well, in, in, in that case, here here's your bottle of Jurgen's hand lotion back. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's empty. <laughs> well, I don't need your Jurgen's hand lotion. Oh, of course. Because I have. Oh, no. Brian's hand sanitizer. Yep. Yeah. Oh. oh. They still, they still have a half a bottle of this left. Uh, um. Good. I'll send you some next pandemic. Next pandemic, I get more. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you sent me that, and you sent me one of your. These, these are the things that he. Yeah. We have a little stash here for you. Adrian made some stuff. For you. I gotta send oh, it. Really? Maybe you know what I've got up on the uh, on the on the door here. You haven't yeah. seen it. But the pictures you sent me mm. that she drew, and they're on the door to the studio here. Nice. If you yeah, ever came here, you'll see it. some more. Yeah. We'll no. send some more this week. Yeah. She's actually very good. You know how you can tell a kid is good at drawing? It's not that they, that they uh, that maybe draw fingers as sticks or whatever, but that uh, she has a good sense of proportion. Mm. And that's what you, when you know a kid's got a little, little art uh, going for her. You know, yeah. But anyway, yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Jack. Anything important you're going to talk about tonight? Uh, well, I've got some things I think are important. We had something happen. Maybe you mentioned it earlier. Uh, it happened in Washington today. Uh, the House voted to pass a bill that uh, the Senate approved yesterday to make June the 19th a national holiday. That pissed me off. Why? That's what do they call it? They call it uh, Juneteenth. Juneteenth. Day. I'll tell you why. Where's the holiday for Asians? Where's the holiday for Mexicans or Latinos? Mm -hmm. There, are, you know, uh, we already have a black holiday when it's uh, Martin Luther King's birthday. So now honor yet another group and maybe a few other ethnic well, groups. I think we should, you know. We you are, know? We are but I mean, I don't know why blacks should suddenly have two holidays. Am, am well, I wrong? I can, think, I, can, I can think of 250 good reasons. What's that? 250 years of slavery. Well, that's fine, but you you got your Martin Luther King birthday. Mm -hmm. Now, why I don't we... I would have, instead of a king, they, I would have rather you know, had a Martin I mean, I don't King. think I, I don't think the Mexicans in our country... Uh, consider uh, Cinco de Mayo they a will. major holiday for yeah. for Hispanics. They will. When, when you know when when they start voting in the kinds of numbers oh, consistently, <laughs> they will start demanding. Well, wait a minute! Uh, I didn't know that voting vo voting in sufficient quantities entitled you to have a a, a time taken. To honor your particular group, and I think, quite frankly, I think we should have like twenty or thirty of these. I agree. Uh, because that way, we'll never have to go to work. <laughs> what about Black Friday, Black Friday too. Black yeah. Friday. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. They're, they're, Look at that. Yeah, but you see, why's it got to be Black Friday? Right, right. There's another history, another another <laughs> holiday that blacks have. You know. Now, for the benefit of some of my grandkids, I'd like to see a uh, multiracial holiday 
for, for what will be the turning point for America. Yeah, we but I mean, I just, I just, uh, I, I just didn't see. I thought that that was uh, a bunch of white people feeling guilty and and giving yet one more holiday to to black people when in fact a holiday should have been done for Hispanic and, yes. and a see, holiday from, should be see. done for Asians. You know, yes. Asians helped build this country with that's the goddamn the railroads, you know, mm -hmm. and they yeah, were pressed the into into indentured servitude of a sort, you know, so. Yeah, and, there, the the rest of us. And, and there should be mm -hmm. a, a national day of recognition for the Nisi of California and the West Coast who were yeah. put in America. And I'm not even asking for a Jewish mm -hmm. holiday. I don't really give a shit, you know. No, no Jewish holiday is uh, the day when Everybody's check gets. Cashed. I know. I knew. See, I knew it was going to be a cheap joke. It was going to oh, be. It was going to be an anti-Semitic joke. Hey, yeah. I, don't know yeah. I got a. You know, I got. I know some of your best somebody. friends are Jewish. I know. I know. You have eight Christmases. Leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. See you in a bit. I want Vikings Day. You want Vikings Day exactly. <laughs> and for each. Oh, yes, yeah. John Larkin. John. Yeah, you know what the travesty is about the uh, Juneteenth celebration is, you know, the Republicans will vote for that, you know, for the holiday, but, oh, yeah. but they won't vote for uh, uh, critical race theory to be taught. So, so yeah, you can't yeah. the yeah. history. You know, God, what, what's that about? Uh, but what is it? Exactly, oh, somebody quickly explain to me, what is critical race theory? What's just the it's history? the truth is what it is. The history of slavery and the history. Oh, of so the it's in other words, it's going back and undoing the myths, as it were, and telling the truth about yeah. the history. Okay, right. I wonder what. I just wonder what that term "critical." You know, well, I, I thought maybe it had to be critical. And all these red states have voted that it's illegal to teach the truth. Yeah. Did you see how many states are working to overturn the kind of? Of, of voting rights that we have in, in almost, yeah. you know, like 40 of the 50 states or whatever. It's a ridiculous. Ridiculous. Doesn't federal law trump all that stuff? Hey, listen, if I were all of you, I would move to Europe and get the hell out of Dodge. You know? Seriously. I'm looking at houses in Zermatt. My son's uh, godfather said, hey, if you want a house in Europe, let me know. Start searching. Yeah, well, you know, if you go okay. over there, I'll buy you a goat. Okay, so you can, no goats. <laughs> there are lots of goats. Well, you, we been, we went to Zermatt together. Yes, we yeah. honeymooned in Zermatt. Where the hell is Zermatt? What we did What's is Zermatt? we we, we there said, must have been a Motel Six there. We had a travel we agent. Saw many a Sony's on the train. We, we had a travel really? agent who said, "Get her a cheap ring to wear, and then we will I wore. Uh, we will yep. send ahead to all the hotels you're going to stay at and say you're on your honeymoon." And they upgraded us to the honeymoon suite, and when we went out, there was champagne and chocolates. I mean, and our flowers. hotel in Zermatt had three balconies looking up, three balconies looking up to the Matterhorn. Yeah, yeah, it was wonderful. Oh, it was yeah. wonderful. It was a uh, that was a uh, that was a trip to remember. That was my. Oh, it was awesome. We went to. And I paid for half. I mean, when was the last time you took someone to Europe and they paid half well, I abroad? Think I, Thank you. I think abroad. you paid for half the hotels and I paid for half the hotels. Oh, you're yeah. tacky, yeah. Alex. You should have paid for them all. Why? No. My friends. Because yeah. you were newlyweds. Thank wet. you. Oh, my God. <laughs> she wouldn't have wanted me to, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, she, she in fact, was insisting that she take care of it. And I, 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 I took care of all the air fair and all of that and then we got the hookup first well class. i had this woman who anytime i wanted to take a flight on twa yep. i just got the cheapest ticket i could lay my hands on and then she would upgrade me to first class it was awesome so we were did Why? first class Why? both ways it was Why? wonderful huh because you were alex bennett that's right kiss my ass anyway yeah, we could <laughs> That's uh, great. Anyway, hey, listen, that's it for tonight. Boy, it's gone by nicely tonight. Um, thank you, Alan. Thank you very much to Matt. Matt, you haven't said much of anything, but have a nice trip. And when you get to where you land, please call us, okay? I will. Thank you. Okay, please call us. And and Charlie Wallace, always love having you here. Jeff, Thanks, always Alan. love having you here. Tony, great having you oh, here. Nice. And you didn't drink any coffee tonight, and that's fine with us. Uh, and of course, John Larkin and his mandolin. Mm -hmm.
and the lovely and attractive Schmoody Kathleen. And uh, finally, the guy we just love to have here, a regular, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Everybody, why don't you wave goodbye, and I'll wave goodbye back at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, they're going to leave now, and uh, some of them may go over and hang out with Jack Bishop, who does his show next. From on Skype at Gabnet Live is the uh, address if you want to call him. We'll be back again tomorrow night, uh, 10:30, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, if you haven't done so already, get a vaccination, will you? And uh, if you don't vaccinate yourself, wear a mask. See you tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Stay safe.